Back in 1962, Seattle's monorail was the World's Fair's answer to traffic. The theme of the fair is Century 21. Elvis even wrote it. And so did our Walter Cronkite. This will help solve traffic congestion in our biggest cities. The monorail has kept its one-track mind, trying to live up to that promise ever since. More than two million people still ride the monorail in and out of Seattle. And the best part about it is it's all done high above those clogged streets below. After all, that was the point. But the monorail never really caught on in this country, and our gridlock remains one of our biggest gripes. According to one estimate, the northbound side, we've got a motorcycle crash block. We sat in traffic an average of 97 hours last year, costing roughly $87 billion in lost productivity. You're blaming me for the traffic? Should I? Traffic has become such a pain in our spare tire that Hollywood can't resist the gag. Traffic and weather together every 10 minutes on the fives. Here's Denise Fondo. That five northbound's a mess in Orange County. At KNX 1070 Radio in Los Angeles. The drive bogged down out of Boyle Heights. It's pretty Traffic coverage possible. is nonstop. Right, now let's go to Scott and Sky One. Off afternoon here, southbound 405. There was a crash report at 405. LA's congestion is so bad, it's made some people's careers, like reporter Scott Burke. Everybody moves here to be an actor. I didn't. I moved here to be a traffic reporter. <laughs> to see it from up here, commuting appears to be the definition of insanity. There's one of the worst freeways in town on a consistent basis. Some things you can count on, death, taxes, and traffic. And yet, our nation's love affair with the car never seems to wane. It's hard to just radically change what's evolved slowly over the last century. When you start hitting this 90, 95% of capacity, it just breaks down. And Robert Severo. A professor emeritus at the University of California, Berkeley. This is the American dream of freedom on wheels. Says the solution to traffic has generally been to build more roads. More automobiles are born each day than babies. But all those new concrete ribbons just enticed more people to drive. There's always a pent up demand for movement. So if you add capacity, you unleash this pent-up demand, and quickly it gets filled again. This stretch of I-10 west of Houston was expanded to 26 lanes across in some places. But not long after that nearly $3 billion expansion project was completed, everybody started driving it again, and commute times started creeping up again. To get drivers out of their cars, some have proposed charging for taking up our precious road space. It's an idea called congestion pricing. Essentially, you drive it, you buy it, except that you pay more to drive in busy areas at busy times. Cities like London and Singapore are already using it to reduce their traffic. And by 2021, New York City will put it into effect too. But what do you do if you have no other option? This is the only operational hyperloop in the world right now. At this Nevada test site, a group of visionaries is building this high-tech option in a tube. This is the tunnel of the future. Yeah. Engineer Kristen Hammer took us inside. There hasn't been a new form of transportation in over 100 years. And this is it. This is it. Called Virgin Hyperloop One, the system would hurdle commuters in a pod through a nearly friction-free vacuum tube using magnetic levitation. In testing, it's reached speeds of 240 miles an hour. The goal is close to 700 miles an hour. It can fit right in the median of many existing freeways, says CEO Jay Walder. And unlike a bullet train, these pods will be on demand. You see it as a transformative transportation technology. It really is disruptive. It really does give us a chance to rethink the entire paradigm of intercity transportation that, that we have. The Hyperloop, though, for now, isn't going to help much with your commute to the grocery store. For that, there's this more old school idea, gondolas. We know what you're thinking, and so does urban planner and gondola proponent Stephen Day. We're literally in Mexico, and they've used a ski lift as public transit. It, it is an absurd idea. It's ridiculous. And yet, and yet it works. 
Some 20,000 people a week use this system on the outskirts of Mexico City. It drops an hour commute to just 20 minutes. Would you rather this or be in the subway? Right. <laughs> exactly. Medellin, Colombia and La Paz, Bolivia have both championed gondola use. And Dale thinks we could be seeing them in U.S. cities like Los Angeles and Oakland within a few years. This isn't going to solve all of our transportation woes. It's just another tool in the toolbox. And that's the upshot of all this. No single transportation alternative is going to unjam our traffic jams. We all have somewhere to go, usually at the same time, to the same place. As the saying goes, we're not really stuck in traffic. We are the traffic.